have the hottest new clips from Paris Blockchain Week. Brad Garlinghouse is on stage dropping all kinds of truth bombs. We're talking about stable coins hit 30 trillion, what's going on with the XRP ETF and how likely that is. You'll see that. We have American Express and Ripple. It runs on Ripple. I have Bank of America stuff in here that Ripple and Bank of America partnership. This video is going to be amazing. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. We are growing the channel because of you. Let's go ahead and get into this. Brad Garlinghouse on stage, stable coins to hit 30 trillion dollars. Let's play this. After a view, I think many of us are believers in the stable coin market. As a bridge between traditional finance and decentralized finance, stable coins, I think, play a very important role. The, the, the market itself today, as I think we all have seen, is about $150 billion. Yeah. The US dollar stable coins by far is the, the dominant. Some, and certainly I'm one of these players, believe that that market at $150 billion today, you know, it's forecast to be somewhere around two and a half to three trillion in about four or five years. So that's a 20x growth. Uh, I think there's gonna be a bunch of different players. Uh, and I look, I think Tether's gonna to continue to do well. Circle's gonna to continue to do well. I think there's a role for Ripple to play in that, given our focus on the kind of infrastructure level. And look, I also think, and we wouldn't do this unless we thought it was gonna be very good to the XP ledger. As you have seen stable coins launch on other layer ones, you've seen liquidity in that layer one grow. Our, our goal is to grow liquidity in XRP Ledger. So we think view this as a good opportunity for Ripple, but an even better impact on the XRP Ledger. There you um, go. Looking forward to that for sure. Uh, what you know? What are the the, the steps going to launching a, a stable coin on the XRP? Well, one of the I mean, one of the most important pieces of a robust stable coin is really banking partnerships. Yep. And so you know, a lot of the questions we got when we announced last week were questions about you know, how we're going to manage audits, how we're going to manage attestations. Our goal is absolutely. All right, let's play this next one, guys. So here is, this is by Edward Frino. He's actually there at Paris Blockchain Week. Let's go ahead and play this one. Bitcoin, and because of the- Sorry about the, it looks like crap, but- I'm not saying oh, yeah. just buy Bitcoin or just buy XRP. I'm saying you want to invest in a basket and have diversification. So look, I think there will be other ETFs. Unfortunately, I think it's going to take a little bit of time because the United States SEC is fighting that. But I, I think what is that people don't fully understand that they haven't really paid attention. In the United States, there's only two crypto have regulatory clarity. Bitcoin and because and of XRP, the baby. Of course, XRP has more clarity. Yep. It's not a security. There will be other ETFs at states. I hardly break the timeline because I'm not part of Gary Gensler in this and fight. Gary Gensler will not be the chair of SEC in you know, probably a year and a half or two years' time. There will be a new leader, a new Thank perspective, God. and I hope a more constructive perspective from the United States on how to work with this industry. This industry is not going away. And in events like Paris Blockchain, we keep growing for a reason. Remember that the SEC has to approve a XRP ETF, right? That's whose decision it is, and that's Gary Gensler's decision. And how much of it, you know, he just got his ass handed to him by Ripple over the past several months. I doubt he is eager to approve an XRP ETF anytime soon. Also, you have American Express. Check this out. I was like, well, what, what does this have to do with? Look at the bottom. Runs on Ripple. XRP. Ripple. American Express. Game changer. Yes? Awesome, right? That's really cool. I thought that was really fun to see at the bottom of the screen there. Also, here you go. Bank of America and Ripple have a partnership that goes back years. Bank of America is waiting for all of this court stuff to be settled before they want to start using XRP in the bank, right? To send payments, right? That is really the end goal of what we're trying to get to. Once that is all cleared and XRP really has the clarity that it needs in the United States, not just Bank of America, imagine all of the other banks that are competing against Bank of America are going to want to use the same type of asset that Bank of America is using, right? Because it's not only going to save them time, it's going to save them money. And at the end of the day, banks are here to make money. And if they can save a buttload, you're talking billions and billions of dollars, they are 100% going to use the technology. Let's go ahead and play this. I'm gonna take you through my notes from the day. It's quite loud in here, so I apologize. First thing is I, I met with Brad Garlinghouse face to face and Brad was so confident. He's got an air of confidence about him that's unbelievable. I met Brad first in 2019 back in Singapore, and he's even more confident today than he was back then. He made it clear.
clear that they're ready to settle with the SEC as long as they can get clarity on XRP. I asked him if American companies were waiting on the sidelines to jump in the game once clarity happens, and he said absolutely. And he specifically said Bank of America. Bank of America is a huge partner of Ripple, and he said Bank of America. Bank of America stands to gain really big when the settlement happens because they're going to have a huge competitive advantage over their competitors by using ODL in the marketplace. So Brad is very, very bullish. When asked what what you know what motivates Brad every day, Brad just said, "I want to put a dent in the universe." We've heard that from Navi and Gipta, and and Brad has the same philosophy. So that was fantastic. That was my one-on-one -on -one with Brad. And that's what they're going to do, guys. They're going to make a dent in the universe or they are, they're going to go away, right? That's, that's, that's basically Ripple's whole mindset. Change the entire world or just fade away into the background, right? And they're going to change the world. Santander UK has also been a longtime partner of Ripple. Uh, Chad Stein Grabber po posted this, right? You have Amex, you have Santander, you have some of the biggest banks in the world that are already partnered with Ripple. Once they decide to start using the technology, that is where we can expect a stupid, ridiculous price for XRP because then a lot of XRP is going to be needed all of a sudden to do all of this, right? And I know you're gonna say, well, Sensei, you can reuse XRP over and over again. That's very true. But if you're getting trillions of dollars in volume, you are going to need billions and billions of XRP constantly to do all of that volume, okay? And there's only gonna be so much, right? People are catching on. People are understanding that crypto right now is a full speculative market. But the use case for crypto, the biggest use case in the world is payments, right? And if you look at the payments landscape, the company that is far out in front of all of the other companies is Ripple. Hands down. Stellar is pretty close. XTC is, is doing a lot of really great work, but it's still Ripple at the end of the day. Also, we talked about this in a previous video. Uh, as of May 2023, Trangolo processed over 1 billion in Ripple payments using XRP as the settlement system, right? This is all a testing ground to show central banks and banks alike that this asset can be used on a massive scale to help them save time, energy, and money, right? And here is a list. Australia was one of the first countries to go live with Ripple liquidity hubs last November. Now that you see Trangolo is connecting those hubs to just about every bank in Australia, right? We have banks in Japan. We have banks in Australia. We have banks in the US. We have banks all over Africa. Banks in Brazil, right? South America. We have banks all over Europe. The planet is starting to be covered by the utility of the XRP token through Ripple. Ripple can actually send a payment pretty much any of the world. They cover about 90 to 95% of the globe. Once they reach that full 100%, it's going to be on. It's going to be on. And then if I scroll in here, you can see all of these different banks. I'm not from Australia, but you have like a Bank Australia, CIBC is probably in here, Bank of America, National Association, BNB Paribas, Bank West. There's so many incredible partnerships that Ripple has. And uh, Black Swan put this out. Global shifts are already occurring. Oil trade, gold prices, trade settlements without the US dollar, central banks accumulating gold, central banks divesting from US Treasury, CBDC development, and XRP. At the end of the day, XRP is king. Hands down, there's nothing else out there that quite solves the entire world's issues in payments and central bank digital currency than XRP. It was built for all of this. Remember, this was built back in 2012 and 2013. They saw what Bitcoin was capable of, but they're like, you know what? This is too slow. This is too costly. This is too energy. I was going to say energy efficient. It is too energy intensive and XRP solves all of this, right? This is why I'm so bullish, and this is why you keep coming back to this channel for your XRP content. I will keep bringing you the best and up-to-date XRP news. I only think I only ask one thing from you is to like and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. We're growing, and it's all because of you. I can't thank you enough. I will see you next time. Aloha, Sensei.